Finally tonight, bringing sight to millions of people who suffer from eye disease. Special correspondent Fred DeSam Lazaro returned to an eye hospital in India that he first visited in 1989. Aravind is the largest eye care center in the world. The surgical facilities are as modern, the error rate as low as any place in America. The big difference with Aravind is that its patients are among the world's poorest people who rarely get treated for eye diseases. Globally, 45 million people have preventable or reversible blindness. 12 million are in India alone, where the extreme sun and genetics are blamed. Many people lose their sight and livelihood by their early 50s. Aravind's business success and social mission have long made it a model in public health textbooks. Twenty years ago, this much younger reporter came to the ancient temple city of Madurai, where Aravind was founded by Dr. Govindapa Venkatswami. Everyone called him Dr. V. He retired from a government hospital in 1976 and set out to tackle what he called disabling cataract blindness. Nothing which disables a man like cataract and poor eyesight. Aravind itself was a very small operation when Dr. V started it with 11 beds and four doctors, three from his own family. The idea was simple. They would serve patients who could pay. The profits would afford free care to the many more people who couldn't afford even the bus fare. So Aravind set out to find patients, mainly through screening camps in surrounding rural areas. Groups like the Lions Club provided buses to bring those needing surgery to the hospital, where they entered a brisk assembly line operating room. Dr. V's business role model was McDonald's, or American chain stores in general. In America you have models, whether it is um, CS stores, or uh, McDonald hamburger, or you are able to open a chain of shops or restaurants or hotels. You spoke to him uh, here. You were sitting uh, here, and he was sitting there and talking about McDonald's. And uh... Dr. V died in 2005, but his office is left untouched as a shrine to him. His nephew, ophthalmologist Aravind Srinivasan, manages a system that's grown to five regional hospitals and 25 satellite clinics. This was the first one. This is a 32-year-old uh, hospital. Today we are seeing about 1,500 to 2,000 patients a day. Each pays about one dollar for a doctor's appointment. That helps fund even more patients who go next door to a free eye hospital. There's not much profit margin, so a heavy volume of paying patients, satisfied patients, and efficiency are critical. We call this a clinic scoring sheet. Dr. Aravind, who also has an MBA from the University of Michigan, has continuous productivity reports at his fingertips. And this statistics talks about service time. How many, what percentage of people were seen within two hours? Patients are promised a completed appointment in two hours in a brochure detailing what they can expect. So registration takes about five minutes. Vision test takes about 10 minutes, a refraction check about 10 minutes. So this is sort of like a patient's bill of rights almost. Exactly. So they understand what's happening. Aravind's reputation is drawing patients from farther and farther away. Whenever you say eye operations, everyone says, go to Madurai. It's the only reason 55-year-old K.G. Anjaneyalu was coaxed out of a three-year depression that began when cataracts started clouding his vision. He became completely blind three months ago. Anjaneyalu and his wife Shoba endured a two-day train journey to get here. I was a sportsman. I used to swim. After the cataract, I could no longer move around. I got stuck at home and I started eating. Then a leg injury made me even more immobile. I had problems being overweight and I developed high blood pressure. By 9 o'clock the morning after arriving here, he was being prepared for surgery. Already dozens of patients had gone ahead of him. So you've been going for two hours and you've done 16 patients. Yeah. Dr. Aravind and surgeons in several other operating theaters were first working the routine, mostly cataract cases. The more complex ones, like glaucoma and corneal surgery, would come later. It's, it's an entire teamwork, as you've seen in the front. I'm seeing the patient for the first time uh, in the OR. So somebody has done a thorough workup of the patient, and any challenging cases they showed to me earlier. So we are able to identify or, or those cases which needs a little more extra attention is segregated from the pool. 
Anjaneyalu was one such case, his hypertension and obesity posing extra risks. You just have a margin of safety of about 5 to 10 minutes to get the surgery done. About 10 nervous minutes later, Dr. Aravind had removed a particularly tough leathery cataract. The cataract was a little obstinate, but otherwise things went on well. So when you see him tomorrow, you'll see a different man, more confident. By the end of this day, Dr. Aravind and his colleagues did about 300 surgeries, about half of them free of charge. Increasingly, however, patients are seen outside the hospital. Telemedicine connects doctors to satellite clinics, and today's eye camps offer much more on-site, from grinding eyeglass lenses to digital scans. Near this camp, a satellite truck beamed high-resolution images to doctors at the hospital. It's especially useful in diagnosing India's growing problem of diabetes-related eye disease. Technology has improved care, and it's also brought down costs, notably for the intraocular lenses, which are implanted during cataract surgery. They used to be imported. Arvind began making its own intraocular lenses back in the early 1990s. They used to cost between $50 and $100 each. Today, they are made in this factory for as little as $2 a piece. Aravind lenses are exported to 120 countries, and they own 8% of the global market in intraocular lenses. Whether it's supplies or people, the goal is to be self-sufficient. Aravind now has extensive training programs for recent medical graduates. It also trains thousands of mid-level ophthalmic professionals, mostly women from surrounding rural communities. Some 250 hospitals across India and 40 other countries have adopted Aravind's methods. R. D. Tulasi Raj manages the teaching facilities. In this institute, we train organizations to become more efficient. No, we we uh, completely give our uh, uh, intellectual property or our store away. No, they are, they are, we open up our uh, systems, processes, our uh, uh, how much we charge the patients and uh, our records. It's the ethos set by his uncle. Dr. V, who was single, never took a salary. In fact, he mortgaged his home to start Aravind. And he coaxed or inspired 34 members of his extended family to work here, starting in 1976 with his sister Nachiar and her husband. Both left surgical careers in America to work here for about $20 a month. Today, oh my God, we are very, very happy. In fact, uh, uh, at that time, in 80s, we were not happy. Even though Dr. V was happy, in a family life, you know, like uh, me and my husband, two children, it was not easy for us. We couldn't even buy a cycle. At that time, we didn't appreciate his uh, uh, far vision. God bless you, Madam. God bless me, definitely. God bless the surgeon. She says the satisfaction of seeing patients like Anjaneyalu restored to full lives makes up for any material privation. Although over the years, salaries have greatly improved for the 220 doctors and some 2,500 other Aravind staff. My children are starting school on the first, so I want to get going. We'll give you some dark glasses, just like a Hollywood actor. He's one of 27 million patients who've been treated at Aravind and 3.4 million who've had surgery. Surgery that now costs just a few dollars more than a meal at McDonald's. There's more about the Aravin clinics on our website, newshour.pbs.org. You can see a slideshow of images, read a reporter's notebook, and watch Fred's exclusive online report about the partnership that helped those hospitals grow.